I guess Ringo's in town already. Why don't you gun him right away, Curly? He's the one who's sore. He'll have to come after me. You sure you want to fight Curly Burroughs just now? Yeah. What a break for Wyatt. Ringo and Brocious, top guns for the Clanton outfit, gunning for each other. You don't figure they'll really shoot it out, do you, Doc? Mr. Gibbs, your naivete charms me. When two top gunfighters like Johnny and Curly have a fallen out, it's just a matter of waiting. And while I'm waiting, I aim to get some bets down. Uh, who do you pick to win? It's a professional secret. You make your own bets. Legend of Wyatt Earp, starring Hugh O'Brien. One of the mysteries of the Old West to amateur historians was how so many top gunfighters lived so long. The answer, as Wyatt Earp said, is simple. They seldom fought one another. When men of equal speed and skill got in a gunfight, it meant death to both. Thus, when Curly Brocious and John Ringo rode into Tombstone to settle a quarrel, it looked as if Wyatt would soon be rid of two enemies. Galloping horses on Allen Street's against the law. I gotta talk to you. I didn't want it, but Papa said I should. All right. Allow me. Now, uh, let me get this straight. Brocious and Ringo are in town, and they're threatening to shoot each other, and your Papa thinks that I ought to stop the fight? Well, isn't that what your job is, to keep law and order? Yes. Yes, I'll have a talk with Johnny and Curly. Well, disarm them. Run them out of town. Oh, I can't do that. They've racked their guns and they're behaving decent. Well, you mean you can't stop this fight? Well, I can try and talk some sense into their head. By the way, you never told me what the fight was all about. Oh, oh, Brocious accidentally shot Ringo's horse. They, they were in a fight with some Mexican rustlers. And Ringo, he thinks that uh, Curly did it on purpose, well, I get, who knows what Ringo thinks? Anyway, you better stop this fight, or the Nugget newspaper will have you fired. You wanted to see me, Dameron? Not as editor of that wretched little sheet you publish, but you're supposed to be acting mayor. This goes on page one, unless Earp stops the fight. Deliberate slaughter on Allen Street. Is that what you call good police work, hmm? Brocious, Ringo? I hadn't heard about this. You've heard about it now, Mr. Mayor. Well, now I'll tell you, Mr. Dameron. There hasn't been any shooting. Where did you get your tip off, from old man Clanton? I don't reveal my news sources to you, Clum. Where's your sheriff, Johnny Bean? Why doesn't he stop this? Well, sheriff Bean was suddenly called away. Mm hmm. I'll just bet he was. Nugget doesn't stoop to argue with a cheap little imitator. I want action from the city police, and that means up immediate action. Well, now I'll tell you, Mr. Dameron. You got me shaking in my boots. Well, sir, you had better be. Good day. Man, Clanton's got a lot of gall bringing his quarrels into Tombstone. I think Ringo and Brocious are on their own. Gunfighters usually like audiences. Well, then let them shoot it out, White. I wish I could. Dameron does have a point. No, let him holler. No, sir. If it was just a quick brawl in the saloon and a shooting, I wouldn't be expected to do anything about it, but I have been warned about this. 
townspeople expect me to do something. Yes, but... What? I'll have a talk with Ringo and Brocious. Oh, you stay out of it, Mr. Mayor. All right, Wyatt. Wyatt? Good luck. You see, Curly's at the Alhambra. Talking fight. Hello, Mr. Ringo. Well, if it ain't Marshal Earp. I hear you uh, aim to settle something with Curly. That's kind of foolish, isn't it? Foolish? John can take him. I don't think so. No, I think they'd both be dead. You want to bet? Shut up, Irish. They tell me that uh, Curly shot your horse by accident. My horse? My business. He offered to pay you for it, didn't he? Why don't you move along? Yeah. All right. I've got your last words. Now I'd like a before death statement from Curly. Was there trying to scare us? <laughs> well, here's to good old Johnny Ringo. Little pals a long time. But not now, Curly. I still can't believe it. Getting sore of... Don't tell me. That ain't Wyatt Earp. Good old Johnny Law. Come on over, Wyatt. Larkin, give Wyatt your chair. Sure, Curly. Surprise me, Mr. Brushes. Why'd you let this go so far? Who, me? Yeah, you. You could have offered to pay for the horse. I didn't only offer to, I bought him another horse. Better than the one that got killed. Right, Larkin? Curly, give 200 for him. The proof is he's still riding it. Now, what more can a man do, Wyatt? Well, you could go on back to Clanton Ranch. Let Ringo cool off. He'd think I was scared. We don't run from nobody. Well, it seems to me that the least you boys could do is take your fight outside of town. Now, why don't you and Ringo just shoot it out on the trail? Johnny don't want it that way. He said if he caught Curly in Tombstone, he'd got him. Now, you couldn't take that either, Wyatt. Man can't back down from a fight. We ain't scared of Ringo. All right. Tom will just have to dig two graves in Boot Hill. So long, Curly. Best bet I've seen in months. And you two men just sit there. Haven't you any imagination? Ringo versus Brocious. In a grudge fight with guns. Think of the amusing possibilities. All right, Doc, such as what? Even money, they kill each other. Or two to one that Ringo kills Brocious, and I'll take that bet the other way. I'll bet ten to one that Ringo dies and Brocious is only wounded, and I'll take that bet the other way also. All right, gentlemen, get up your money. Well, what odds do you give on him not fighting at all? Well, that's a very interesting thought. Very interesting. Doc. Right with you, Wyatt. Now, you two sportsmen, stay right here. Don't leave. Look, Doc, I'm in trouble. Just want to get this town cooled off somewhat. This breaks loose. Now, we can't afford a showdown between Ringo and Brocious. You're a fool. Thanks. Let them kill each other. Then the McLowry boys will be top guns for Clanton. You're thinking like a hoodlum. I am not. I'm thinking like a gambler. You mean you're making bets on this? Of course I am. I got some customers waiting inside. Look, I want you to do me a favor. You want me to kill them? No, I want you to talk them out of it. I respect your opinion. Me, I'm just a John Law trying to keep the peace. Am I a friend, Wyatt? Then I say as your friend, this is the best thing that's happened to you since you came to Tombstone. Johnny Ringo and Curly Broche is dead, and you don't even have to kill him. 
I'm wearing a star. I can't think the way you do, Doc. Nobody will blame you but Dameron of the Nug, and he blames you for everything anyway. You know, you're a gambler. Why don't you uh, make bets that there won't be any fight, and then you stop it? You can get awful long odds that way. Sorry, Deacon. You love your enemies. I want them buried. Emma said you promised to talk to Ringo and Brochure. I did talk to him. No luck? Then throw him in jail. I don't want this fight to happen. Nothing to arrest him for, Mr. Clanton. They checked the guns. They've created no disturbance. Yet. Where's Johnny being? Well, he, uh, ducked out. Huh. Figured he would. Judge Spicer in town? Reckon so. Then I'll talk to him. And you come along to back me up. That's what us taxpayers paying you for. All right. I'll see you over there. Yeah, it was a day I'll hammer looking. How's he feeling, Irish? He's making up his mind, Joe. Sit at another table, boys, and labor and go along. Bye, Tender. Bring us a bottle and some glasses. Howdy, boys. Come on over. Hello, Curly. Curly, good to see you. You all the friends I got? Well, some of the bunch taking sides with Johnny. That's their business. Where's Frank and Tom McLowry? They couldn't make it. Tom said him and Frank wish you good luck, though, Curly. <laughs> they know Ringo. He has funny spells. You know, I saw Ringo shoot Turk Davis because he ordered beer instead of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ringo for you. I can bring another chair over. We might as well be comfortable while we're waiting. Joe, bring us all a whiskey. Curly ain't going after Ringo. Ringo's got to come after Curly first. Sure. I don't want the old man blaming me for this. This row's dividing my whole outfit. And if Ringo and Brocious go to shooting, there's going to be a big war on Allen Street. And all that Marshal Earp does is talk. How can he arrest them? I'll say they both rustle some of my steers. Could you prove that? You can hold them on suspicion, can't you? No, sir. In fact, I think you've got an awful lot of cheek to bring your troubles into Tombstone. My last week, you tried to ambush Marshal Earp and Deputy Gibbs. And there's still the killing of that Wells Fargo guard. I see. A taxpayer can't ask a judge and a John Law to do their duty. Well, I'll speak to them around to the nugget. He'll blister your hides for you. You'd think he was a law-abiding citizen. He's got us cornered, and he knows it. Well, sir, I, uh, I could pick a fight with Johnny Ringo. No. That would just make things worse. You'd have to wound the man or kill him. Yes, sir. Clanton's put us all on trial, Wyatt. People expect us to act with strict legality. Now, couldn't you find some ordinance that Ringo and Curly have broken? I'll try. Hey, Ringo! Johnny Ringo! I want to talk to you. Curly wants me to explain something. Come on out, Ringo! It's that blabbermouth Larkin. Go out and see what he's up to. Yes, sir. Right away, Johnny. Where's Ringo? Why didn't he come out himself? He don't talk to blabbermouths like you. Oh, yeah? What I blabber about? He said Johnny was running away when his horse got shot. That's a dirty lie. He also said that Curly give Johnny a stolen horse. Another lie. Oh? So what kind of a horse is Curly riding? You know, you wouldn't be telling lies like that, Irish, if I was carrying my gun. You go get your gun. I'll wait till Curly's taking care of Ringo. Then I'll come after you. It'll be the other way around, Larkin. 
I'm going to gun you. Talk's cheap. You want to hear what Curly has to say or don't you? No, Ringo ain't interested in what that fool says. Next time, you'll be wearing your gun. You asked for it. You tell Ringo to come out and make his play. And I'll be waiting for you. Ferocious is waiting at the Alhambra. You'll have to go there after him. All right. Now? In a minute. Get me a drink. Sure, Johnny. What's in? Whiskey. What was all that about? Gibbons and Larkin got a fight of their own started. Threatened to gun each other. Oh, that's fine. Any particular time? Yeah. After their heroes kill each other. All right. You going over to the jail? Wait for me. I got something I want to do, and I'll join you later. It's almost 4 o'clock. This is beginning to fidget me. Ah, uh, stop worrying about the old man, Curly. Go over to the birdcage and finish him, Curly. Ringo probably thinks you're scared. Well, he thinks wrong. Curly! Ringo's coming after you. How do you know? That liar and Iris has been talking. Too much and too big. Good. Then it won't be my fault. <laughs> We can make a case to stop him. Yeah, how's that? Well, Curly's horse has got a mangled brand. Ringo's horse hasn't got a brand at all. They could be stolen. Yeah, they sure could be. Ringo must be ready to go after Brocious by now. You going over to the Alhambra and arrest Curly. I'll get Ringo. Right. <laughs> Gun. Right away, Johnny. Yeah. Where were you, Ringo? Uh, Brocious hasn't got the stomach for this. I'll back you, Johnny, in case Larkin does anything wrong. Give me your gun, Ringo. Back up, all of you. Come on, back away. I said, back away. Yeah, he got Ringo thrown in the jail by blabbing too loud on the street. And I'll fix Larkin. I told him I would. With your mouth or with that 45? I'm gonna gun him down. Looks like he's after you. He threatened to kill me and call me a liar. I got witnesses. You don't need witnesses. Put on your gun belt. He's putting on his gun. That's what you wanted, ain't it, Irish? I can take that slow poke. Hurry up! 
Dirty it up, Larkin! Brushes and Ringo out here, quick. That's Larkin, Marshal. He's dead, Marshal. Mr. Gibbs, bring our two heroes over here. Step aside, Lord. Gibbons was a mite faster than Larkin. Caught him in the stomach. At the same time, Larkin caught Gibbons in the chest with a reflex yank in the trigger. They must have gotten off the second shot at the same time after they hit the ground. Both were hit in the head and killed. That's all, gentlemen. Let's go, boys. All right, gentlemen, pay out the money on the no-fight bet, 100 to 1. What about the other bets, Doc? They've all been canceled. Ringo and Brocious didn't fight. Come on, gentlemen, pay up. Uh-huh, not yet. Look, Brocious and Ringo can still fight as soon as they get out of jail. He's right, Doc. The bet should stand. How much you want to bet on your own lives? Hold it, Doc. You men get off the street. I say get off the street. I may need your help. Both sides may start shooting again. Not until you turn Ringo and Brocious loose. I want to thank you, Wyatt, for arresting those two. I made the killer. Be act serious for a minute. We'll try and get them out of town. Now? There's a powder keg. I figure if I can get Brocious and Ringo outside the city limits, Clanton Cowboys will go, too. You're going to give Ringo and Brocious back their guns? Outside of town. Well, then I'll be very happy to tend to my assistants. I know what you're thinking, and you're wrong. We've had enough gunfighting for one day. Certainly, most certainly. <laughs> Right here. Give back that guns, Mr. Gibson. Well, they still look mean and ornery to me, Wyatt. Got no legal right to withhold their weapons. You're the boss. Maybe you ought to get them down off their horses at least, Wyatt. I got $6,500 bet on this. Hear that, Johnny? Doc's betting on our hides. You ain't so smart, Doc. We ain't fighting just to make you rich. Come on, Curly. Sure thing, Johnny. Too bad. We couldn't have picked a prettier place for him to die. Had a small bet on him myself. Top guns usually live quite a while, Mr. Gibbs. They seldom shoot at their own equals. You let two of our men get killed. Just wait till you read the nugget. Deacon. You'll live to regret this. I already do. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, 
Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold.